So dens are for female only. <laughs> Ravens. Don't no, because you cannot read the le the letter. That's, that's the same for the zooming and going. So this is nice here, how the leaves change colors. And then they be... So they will tell you what tree is it. Where is it? Wow. A closer look. Ah, look at that. It's a turkey. What is that there? Turkey vulture. It's big wingspan of the turkey vulture. Mm -hmm. Ah, I just see that. So we are here in Pennsylvania, Van Cayman. Bobcats, they run like 35 miles an hour. Wow. Fast. Oh, look at that owl. Mm -hmm. and you, I need really to zoom it because if not, it don't really... I think it's so annoying though for the viewer when it's zooming in. Uh -huh. and that's, <laughs> that's the way you focus. Mm. Oh, it's the squirrel. Endless mountain. There's a hawk. Yeah. It's talons. How do you preserve that love, love? Mm, with the chemicals. Mm -hmm. Stuff it. Maybe to remove the intestine and everything. Yeah. So it's um, that the turkey path mm -hmm. is only one mile long, but it's wow. <laughs> the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. For hundreds of years, city dwellers have come to the canyon seeking temporary refuge from the pressures of urban life. Theodore Roosevelt was one. 
He stayed at Stone Lodge, just below the overlook at Leonard Harrison. President Roosevelt, like many of you, came to find solitude and peacefulness in Pennsylvania's Grand Canyon. The canyon is a place that brings you face to face with nature, hiking one of the many trails, or bicycling along the rail trail, or feeling the spray of white water as you bounce down the rapids of Pine Creek. Oh, wow. Sitting around a campfire and listening to the hooting of owls. Hearing the water explode when an osprey snatches a fish from the creek. Or leaning silently against a tree, inhaling the sun warmed aroma of a pine needle carpet. But Pine Creek Gorge, known to thousands of visitors for its quiet, rugged beauty, has not always been quiet or peaceful. In the last 20,000 years, the gorge has undergone dramatic changes, changes produced by both man and nature. Take a close look and you can begin to read the story of the gorge's past. Glaciers advancing southward covered the area with ice. Repeated glacier and water action cut deep into the earth, eventually creating the gorge you see today. The maximum depth of the gorge is 1,450 feet just north of Waterville. At the park area, the depth is over 830 feet, and the distance from rim to rim is 4,000 feet, or nearly three quarters of a mile. Although the gorge is deeper and wider south of here, Leonard Harrison and Colton Point offer the most spectacular views. But the forces of change which influenced the canyon didn't end with the passing of the glaciers. Man himself was yet to play a part in the dramatic process which shaped the history and features of the Pine Creek Gorge. The rugged terrain carved by the glaciers discouraged settlement in the gorge. Up until the 1800s, the canyon was a virtual wilderness. As the new nation grew and expanded westward, its hunger for natural resources increased. The mighty stands of virgin white pine at the Pine Creek Gorge were some of the last cut in Pennsylvania. An average white pine of this era might measure six feet in diameter and 250 feet in height. The desire for white pine brought a second group of visitors to the gorge, a hardy and independent breed of men known as lumberjacks or wood hicks. After being cut, the logs were skidded by teams of horses to splash dams on the pine. At the river, the logs were sometimes formed into rafts, or more commonly, Whoa. were allowed to float singly. When the melting snows ran into Pine Creek, the logs rode swollen waters to lumber mills along the Pine and Susquehanna River. For nearly 50 years, the white pine logging industry was the backbone of Tioga County. As the stands of pine were completed, another abundant conifer was recognized as a quality timber tree. Vast stands of hemlocks were cut and the bark removed for use in the leather tanning industry. To use this seemingly endless supply of hemlock bark, immense tanneries were built across the north central region of Pennsylvania. Many towns of today, such as Galton, Elkland, and Westfield, are reminders of this industry and era. Water transportation of logs was eventually replaced by the railroads, mountain valleys all across the region. A forest and an age were rapidly drawing to an end. But a vision and a feeling for that era live in the writings of George Washington Sears, who, under the pen name of Nesmuk, wrote in both prose and verse of his beloved Pine Creek Gorge. Looking beyond the loss of the forests, game, and fish of Pine Creek, Nesmuk wrote, but I think the next generation will see better sport. The floods of a single season will sweep the streams clear of spent tan bark and poisonous chemicals. The denuded forests will be replaced. The dried up streams will be restocked and a wiser generation will conserve the game and fish instead of destroying. Men will have learned something by that time. By 1910, the hills and valleys along Pine Creek lay stripped, barren and conquered. With the cool evergreen forest gone, the land soon became covered with bramble brush, turned tinderbox dry by the scorching sun. Sparks from steam engines made brush fires commonplace. These fires were so severe that several inches of rich topsoil were burned, effectively and completely altering the soil type. But fire prevention efforts brought destructive fires under control, giving nature a chance to reseed with pioneer tree types, such as the aspen and white birch. These species helped to make the soil ready for the present forest of mixed hardwoods and conifers, 
This forest is succeeding towards the climax forest of northern hardwoods and hemlocks, which once covered the slopes of the canyon. With the new trees have come wildlife, such as bear, turkey, squirrel, and deer, who find a young forest with its variety of plant life to their liking. Over the years, efforts have been made to re-establish the wildlife that once prospered in Penn's woods. From 1913 to 1923, elk were reintroduced to the region. In 1983, the Pine Creek Gorge was the site of the reintroduction of the river otter, the release point being just a few miles south of the park area. Although the elk and otter nearly disappeared from our forests and waters, they once again roam freely in their traditional range. Initial steps towards restoring and preserving the natural beauty of the gorge had started by the early 1900s. At that time, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania had begun acquiring lands on the west rim of the canyon, including Colton Point. The park draws its name from Henry Colton, who supervised timber cutting in the area. In 1922, Leonard Harrison, a resident of Wellsboro, and a successful lumberman and businessman, donated his land on the east rim of the canyon to be used as a state park. In 1933, the Civilian Conservation Corps was formed to help lift the country from its economic depression. These young men were the builders of many ruggedly handsome park structures which are still seen today. In 1968, the Pine Creek Gorge was named a National Natural Landmark in recognition of its outstanding scenic and geologic features. As such, it is under a commitment by both the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's Department of Conservation and Natural Resources and the U.S. Department of the Interior to be kept in as nearly a wild state as possible. Visitors to the Pine Creek Gorge find that it offers many recreational activities, including camping and hiking at Leonard Harrison and Colton Point, and bicycling on the rail trail that follows Pine Creek as it winds along the glacial park path of the canyon. This area offers not only these and other recreational activities, but also a fine opportunity to broaden our understanding of the world in which we live. Through a statewide program of environmental education and interpretation, visitors to these parks are able to enjoy interesting displays and programs by park personnel on a variety of natural subjects. In this natural state, the Pine Creek Gorge may yet make its most valuable contribution to mankind. This can be found in its quiet paths and hiking trails, its freshwater boating, and its spots of solitude. Pine Creek waits to fill the needs of future generations, for nearness with nature, and for quiet contemplation of what the future holds, not only for the canyon, but for their own lives as well.